Welcome back to MK Sports Cars. Top or bottom, wherever your turbo is most comfortable. It's a hard knocks life. New Busa Project Milo is absolutely flying. On this week's segment of Keeping Up With The Car Hackians, not green, not blue, but pink stuff. Another car for sale. Does this one year old CBR tickle your fancy? If so, give us a call. Don't go anywhere guys, you don't want to miss it. <laughs> it's like Christmas. Welcome back to MK Sports Cars, guys. Well, before we head into the workshop, while the sun was shining, we rolled these two outside. Well, what are they? Well, they're both RX-5s, but both very different for different reasons. One's got a screen, one hasn't. But what's more interesting is what's under the bonnet. Right, guys, so on the surface, both RX-5s, they look exactly the same. Well, they're not quite the same. They're very different for different reasons. Let's start with the engine bay. Well, engine, this is a stock Mazda 1.8 BP engine MB, whichever you want. So it's a 98 to 2000 engine. Yeah, this was a low mileage one, thankfully. Nice, it sounds sweet as a nut. But what it's had done, and you can do with stock internals, is bolt on a TD04L 13T turbo. This runs through to our intercooler and radiator set at the front. It's pretty much everything else is stock, apart from the fuel pump, and the engine management, we've moved Motorsport Electronics, ECU, you can go 442 or 221. We can use that on there. We have to modify the actuator here because the turbo has to be clocked to sit in this position. So uh, you've got a downpipe here and everything else. This is on a cat at the moment because it's going to be registered in IV8. So horsepower wise, numbers wise, let's talk numbers. Quite big actually for a little 1.8 Mazda engine. Well over north for 200, but normally between 220 and 230 horsepower is a reliable number, it's sort of 10, 12 PSI. You can run up to a bar on stock internals on these generally, but we used to keep them a little bit less than that. They go like an absolute scaldy cat with it is there. So that's engine bay number one, around the sort of 230 horsepower, stock engine, TD04 turbo, which falls up with very little lag at all. So it feels bloody quick. Move on to number two. Now in principle, we're looking at this, it's the same engine, 98 to 2000, 1.8. Looks exactly the same, same plenum, same rocker cup, everything else. What's the major difference? Well, what's inside that engine is very different. It's had upgraded rods, upgraded bearings, we've done, it actually has stock pistons though. So we've done all the bits to modify this because we want to ramp up the horsepower we did and go to a bigger turbo. Well, when we go to the bigger turbo, there's not a lot of room on the top mounted manifold. So we go to a low mounted manifold and this is then running a GTX 2860 RS turbo, which is bolted down under here. Forged internals, apart from pistons, all that done, I've actually had uh, adjustable cam sprockets and stuff like that done. Bigger injectors, again, we run the same. Injectors on both of them, EV14s, still do the job, but a bigger fuel pump. So what's the difference? Well, the major difference is the big number in horsepower. 220, 230 horsepower, maybe 240. You can scrape up to 250 out of sometimes stocks. Well, this, she blasted out at 375, but we turned her down at 308 running you know, there's no point, you don't need it, you can't get the power down generally. Um, and that's the major difference between the two in the engines. And does it drive differently? This is so little lag on this, it's really insane how much power it puts you right back in your seat. But you can in the fall. Whereas the TD04, you can nail it a little bit more, so it feels like you're driving it a little bit quicker. Um, although this will probably eat you for breakfast, to be honest with you. Let's go inside the cars, actually. Right, interior-wise, Again, RX-5, so we've gone with stock Mazda clocks on here with a stock Mazda dashboard that we do for it so you can use all the bezels straight off the, the donor car there, the instrument cluster. It's using, again, we've got here the stock, this is all the lights, indicators and everything off the Mazda, the steering wheel boss, etc. as well. So that's all stock Mazda. The only difference is it's got a nice new, our new padded interior, which is the carbon vinyl effect interior it's all one piece padded up actually it's really comfortable it sits nice on your elbow and your legs as well but yeah it's cool got the padded seat inserts in there and the carbon effect vinyl boot cover so interior wise 
um, I'm going to say minimal, but that's what these are all about, keeping the weight down, but enough padding to give you a little bit of creature comfort. Right interior of the RX5 Turbo with a 375, very different, different dashboard, so we've got our stock GRP dashboard in here. Uh, but we've got a DD2 light in here. We wanted a bit more information on this one and you've got an airflow ratio meter and obviously a little boost gauge to see what's going on. We're running a bit more horses when we wanted to see what's going on. Everything else is same GRP seats, a little bit different on the diamond stitch padded inserts, but we've got a solid top. And the major difference is we've got three inch harnesses on this one. And on the other car, same branded ones, but a two inch harness. So a little bit of creature comfort in here with the padded inserts. Um, we can bolt on, you know, fix on the padded insert onto the top there as well. If it's an aftermarket part for you, very easy to fit. Um, but again, minimalist, keeping the weight down. Just a standard vinyl boot cover rather than a carbon effect on that one. So, but the big difference is windscreen. Got a windscreen fitted on here. No windscreen or aero screen yet on that. That's yet to be decided. But we've got the windscreen on with a little uh, race mirrors, F1 style mirrors on there as well. So cool little car, really. Cool little car. So if you want to know more information, of course, about the RX5 with the TDO4 turbo or the RX5 with a big turbo uh, and you're building one or you're converting one or you've already got an RX5 or you want to do a turbo conversion on the Mazda, give us a hook up on a phone call and email. And then what are we going to do now? I'll tell you what, let's head inside. Right, jumping into the workshop. Busy as always in here. So, uh, hashtag Nigel's S2000 in the RR. As we know, bolting this together. We're on with some of the wiring details are finally finished on this one as well now. Um, wheels and tyres gone on. It's got Toyo R888s all round. CXR is eight inch on the rears, six inch on the fronts. And we're just gonna bond on today the old uh, carbon front CSR wings as well. Um, and we're buttoning up really. Um, which is that all these little jobs take a little bit longer. It doesn't look like much happens. So it's the wiring is one thing, all that's wired in now, done, the quick release boss is welded on, um, et cetera, steering column all in. Um, just waiting for the cat for the silencer. And then a seats, still waiting on seats, which is mega frustrating. We was promised them and we are chasing them. I promise you we are chasing them. So last thing to go in to finish up the interior, get the bulkhead on. So lots going on, obviously though, we know the other few weeks we've had a lot of IVAs going on. Um, well, we're on to another build as well while we're finalising on the K20 and finalising a few other bits on the other cars, another build is starting, which is hashtag Knox here. So this is a MK Indy RR, so round tube chassis, fully rose jointed, uh, Gen 2 booster in here, which has been gone through, as we know, it's been on the engine dyno as well. Um, we know it all runs perfectly fine because we took it out of the bike, but we Check the numbers, it made 206. Super happy with that. Um, so the RLM dry sump system put on here, runs at our, it's gonna run our dry sump tank, our five inch tank as well. So all of that's been bolted on onto the engine, comes with a very detailed instruction manual. Um, so if you're looking for a dry sump system for a booster, we've actually got them in stock as well. We carry them um, and the tanks, we also carry in stock as well uh, on the shelf. So that's been bolted in, as you can see, when we've gone in, well, Gen 2 booster in the engine cradle, that's all in. Front end, all together. So we've got Protec shocks, single adjustable, we've got our rocking engine, push rods, bit it front upright, 265 cross drill discs, Wheelwood four pot brakes, 2.4 quick rack. I mean, it whew, goes through, doesn't it? Um, the oil pressure gauge is already mounted. It's only in a few, about, you know, probably less than a week now. Flat shifter system, that's already been mounted. We've now designed it so we can bolt off the engine cradle here. We can mount a bracket here. So this will be bolted off. It's having a full flat shifter in there as well. Engine bay is starting to get buttoned up. 
Right, we're on with interior section here. Well, electrics, brand new room has gone in. Uh, so it's our harness here. This is having the um, free wheel on it as well. So I think it's our eight channel is having on here as well. Flat shifter max, as we can see. All the fuse boxes in onto our ECU mounting panel. Prop shaft goes right the way through, front to back. Electric reverse motor is in there with sprocket. It's down there as well. Although this is going to be a track car, uh, some of the rigs do require reverse mechanism. So he's got that. And this little button here is a line lock for the rear. He's using that as his handbrake. You say this is a sprint hill climb car. Interior panel set in. This is why these brackets in here. We're just bonding that in as well. Seat mounted. We do all the seat mounted before the side panel has gone on. We've got the side panel on there and this one cut and trimmed and ready to go on as well. But it's easier to bolt the seats in guys now with the runners. You've got plenty of access through here and we do all of that. Now comes out, gets shelved until the last minute of the build and gets bolted in. Um, yeah, it's pretty much interior. Right, rear end time, uh, looking pretty as always. Uh, 362 Sierra diff in here, with an LSD in there, it's got an ATB LSD in it. 362 ratio, I know you're all gonna go, ah, oh, why's it got 362? Well, it's a sprint car, I'm car not aiming for really top end speed, we're looking for maximum acceleration. Uh, tripod drive shafts right the way through, brand new. All our billet rear end has gone on, so it has a billet 60 mil bearing carrier. This is our billet adapter that goes onto it as well. I'm bolting onto a Willwood uh, caliper, these are the same. Uh, Protect shock, single adjustables, uh, all round, fully road jointed wishbones, all bolted in as well. Um, fuel tank also fitted in, and we've got the fuel sender in here because we run a DD2 lash in there. So it's all strapped in, nice and solid, and all of these fixings here for the FI rail cage. Final bit to finish up is tidying up the loom, get all that strapped in because he's having some uh, high level LED lights on this. So yeah, bolt back end, I mean, it comes together so quickly. It's just a big Meccano set, really. You don't even need instructions for that. I think Anna behind the camera could install this. It's that easy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> On today's episode of Keeping Up With The Car Hackians, we are polishing our pipes with the pink stuff. I've just learned so much and I realize how crazy messed up the system is. Recommended by one of you guys out there, this is an abrasive paste which you to use a cloth and put it on with a cloth. However, we're going to use the Brillo pad from last week. Before we go any further, let's put the gloves on. I'm just going to take a little bit of this paste and pop it on the pipe and then just give it an abrasive rub. Now this is an abrasive cleaner so you shouldn't need this abrasive pad but I thought we'll just give it a double going over and see what comes back. When I started this little mini series here I wanted to find a product that was very easy for you to, to use on a stainless steel material but we sort of as we're progressing on it's requiring a little bit more elbow grease. This product does require a little bit of elbow grease I would say this is very similar to Auto Soul, this particular product. Okay, so I've been going at this for about two or three minutes now. I'm just going to give this a wipe off because it does actually look like it's done something, believe it or not. I don't know whether you can catch that on the camera. And I haven't rinsed it properly. Oh my gosh! That is mega. Now that is going to require elbow grease, there's no doubt about it. But look at the difference in that. Should we take it outside? So I've just brought this out into the light and I've got to say, that's the before and that is it. I really hope we can catch this on film because I've got to be brutally honest with you, this I think is the best, has given the best results thus far in our testing. Um, what I will say though, it does require a little bit of elbow grease, so I might mark it down off the back of that, but the pink stuff certainly gets the vote. So again, there's the before, it's all quite dirty and used and pitted and whatnot, and there's the after, after a couple of minutes. Now it is going to take some elbow grease, so as I say, a few marks down from that, but wow, has actually worked. Right, RX five times, you can see it's been stripped. <laughs> we've got even further. A um, bit further, the roll cage has come off now, and we're gonna to go to a roll bar on this particular car now. We've gone through the interior. Adrian's done a sterling job of tearing in through the wiring, uh, because although it looks like a bit of a 
bird's nest still in here. He's gone through everything, chased everything back, cut out what we didn't need, rewired what we needed to do. Um, and then, do you know what? Let's see if she fires. Gauges, battery light, neutral. Look at that, like a little sewing machine. Awesome. So yeah, all running, perfectly now. So now we're happy with the wiring, got all that detailed in, we can start buttoning things back up now. So we had to go a long way backwards on this car before we can go forward. So we've done all the backwards stuff, now we're gonna start making it look pretty. Right, another car that's landed in the workshop here, we've got, we spoke about earlier, the turbos. This is a TDO4, so it's an RX5 car. And it's well, looking gorgeous in orange and black, getting prepped for IVA really now. A few little bits to do on it, nothing major. It's about what we've got a list of about eight or nine items when I've gone through the car here, uh, just to, to tick off things like, um, you know, it's a lot of tips. Don't forget the video on, online that we do. It does help. Things like this, if the braided hose here, on lock to lock. If you go lock at the moment, that's gonna hit and touch. That'll be an IVA foul. Things like that, guys. Um, simple things, but as you're building them, try and iron them out. And if you're unsure, um, go into the video. It tells you exactly what it's doing. So yeah, it's got the nice, it's all nicely, uh, new padded top in here, padded seats in there, standard dash, carbon effect rear, uh, boot cover, LED lights, Pro Race 1.2s, stock brakes um, on this particular one. Um, but they're all refurbished, all like new. I mean, actually super clean car. And I'm really liking this orange and black. I know we've had a couple lately, orange and black. We seem to go through yellow and black. Now we've gone orange and black, bit of a theme. But good thing about this one, it's gonna be for sale, guys. So if you're interested in an RX5 Turbo, this will probably be, if it hasn't sold before, then it's gonna be on the stand at Stonely as well. She'll so be able to sit, touch, feel, look at this car as well. Um, and this is just gonna go for the final IVA process. Right guys, here we are hot off the press. We've had this landed on our doorstep. Um, it's up for sale. Another car for sale for you guys. And it, you know, it's a mental little beast. What is it? Well, it's something you've probably not really seen before. It's the AB Performance Shaman. Uh, it's one of one uh, that was done. Uh, I think the body mold is still in existence, but it's one of one. Um, basically under the chassis here, or under the skin of this, is an Arium based chassis. Uh, so it's got inboard rocker suspension on the front, bit it front uprights. It's got a CBR1000 uh, RR SP 2015 engine in there. Uh, billet sump, electric water pump. It's got all the bells and whistles basically on this. Front and rear anti-roll bars, quick release boss, savage switches, DD2 dash. LSD in it, Progress 1.2s, Wilwood brakes all round, roll cage, aero screen, sticky tyres, as in like it's got the R888 R's. Super clean car, it's done very low mileage. Um, it was only registered last year. We put it through its IVA last year for the customer. So we do know the car, we're familiar with it. Goes like an actually scalded cat as any CBR comes uh, to the 4A. They bring lots of RPM, lots of noise, lots of theatre and lots of fun. So yeah, if you want to know about this car and know a bit more about it, hook us up on a phone call or an email. If you're really unsure and you want to come down and have a look at it, look, the sun is shining, it's ready to sit in your garage. Right guys, chassis production schedule. As normal each week we try and share that information. Well, another one has landed. This one is hashtag uh, Russell's, yeah, it's got the uh, two-liter Duratec going in here, so it's all been mocked up, and this is going with, so we have done all the jigs for this. If you're looking for a Mazda gearbox, so Mark III gearbox, NC, to a Duratec engine, that plonks in, no problem, that bad boy bolts straight in now, all the jigs are done, so Duratec, Mazda gearbox, all done. We just finished off the exhaust system jigs on that as well. Um, so yeah, that's done, that one's landed, but up there, whew, and it's gonna fire it up right there for you now, to see if they're, are oh, you on the queue? Well, what another crazy week here at MK Sports Cars. But don't forget, cars for sale, guys. We've got this one. Just come up, freshly IVA'd, the R1 engine, bike engine, five, uh, RX5 MC. She's up for sale. Uh, will be at Stony if not. Um, you can come down, have a look. Maybe have a little test drive. Cheeky little one. Got another little RX5 there, grey one. Uh, but that's Mazda, car engine. We've also got a white car, RX5, again, VVC, up for sale. 1.8 engine, both of these, all three of these cars, brand new, freshly IVA'd, ready to roll out or sit in your garage for you to polish up. And of course, last but not least, the Shaman, which we just go over and over now, that's up for sale 
as well. So obviously, if you want to come down here, have a look. It's always nice to stand in front of these cars, sit in them, feel them, touch them. Have a good look round. We're happy to oblige you here at the workshop. Right, as always, I'm going to say this week, thanks for watching. It's really good to see your feedback and comments coming down below and about the car hackings, what Neil was getting on. If you want us to do any other sort of car hacks, pop it down in the comments there. We'd love to share that out with you. That's it for this week, guys. Don't forget to like, share and press that awesome subscribe button down there. Catch you next week.